No. Greetings everyone, Hotfix 30.0.8 is live on PC. This is a delayed release of the patch note reading. Zephyr Prime and Chroma Prime are live in Warframe. You can get them through the new Prime Vault packs on the Warframe website for real life cash where you can get some platinum and some exclusive cosmetics. Otherwise you can farm for the parts in game via their Prime Vault relics. Their Prime Vault relics have replaced that of the previous Prime Vaults being Banshee and Mirage Prime. So Banshee and Mirage Mirage Prime have had their relics removed from the in-game drop tables and this means the only way to acquire the parts for that Warframe outside of the relics you had acquired for them previously is to trade with other players. Moving on though we have the overall changes to Warframe with 30.0.8 and that is that they've updated the shock absorber mod description to reflect its actual function that being plus 20 percent physical damage resistance at max rank and they have made the following note We've also changed its categorization as an Eximus mod into a normal mod. Contrary to its previous description of plus 20% damage resistance on knockdown, it did not require knockdown to give resistance. This has seemed to be the case since its release, and due to its relatively low discussion rates, it was a complete oversight that it was not working as described. When deciding whether to match the description text or existing effect, we considered that unlike mods like Diamond Skin and Flame Repellent, which provide damage type specific resistances, Shock Absorber, which covered all physical damage types, was considered an Exilus. So we have removed its Exilus classification as it better fits in with the other damage resistance mods. Upon login, if you have Shock Absorber equipped in the Exilus slot, it will simply give you a pop-up warning. This slot is reserved for Exilus mods when you open the upgrade screen. You will have to remove it manually from there. Moving onwards, hidden message quest communications will now automatically open the inbox. They've increased the size of the scintillant to make it easier to pick up and see. Updated all of the toroid description to include their drop sources in the Orvalis, and they've added functionality to the aim glide in relays. With a note that after adding the dry dock to certain relays, there became some aim gliding inconsistencies, and the out of bound areas in the dry dock proved cumbersome when attempting to traverse the same way you would in your clan dry dog. As for the Railjack changes and fixes, DE have reduced the visual dominance and frequency of Void Storms and Void Sinks, with a note that this was highly requested player feedback. The visual noise of Void Storms was proving to be quite distracting and difficult to manage. We have made the following changes to improve your ability to focus on objectives and not overwhelming visual distractions. So, they have decreased the strength of the camera shake and increased the time between shakes, ultimately making shakes occur far less. They fixed a condition that prevented void sinks from overflowing the max setting per level, reduced the intensity of the visual effects while you are within the explosion radius of a void sink, and made the visual directional so that you can tell which direction the threat is. They've also reduced the maximum number of active void sinks that can exist if you are playing solo, dramatically decreased the number of void sinks that can spawn inside either the railjack or point of interest, capital ships, and cruise ships. Lastly, void sinks and Void Storms now stop spawning after mission completion to prevent players and the Railjack from dying post-mission. They've also added Reload as a bindable option in the Customized Controller Railjack options, with the added note that they also fixed the Gunnery Rank 9 Flush Heat Sinks Intrinsic not working on Reload after resetting the Railjack Controller bindings to default. They've reduced the brightness of the Elite Harpy's Dash move, reduced the frequency of defensive electrical shocks while you're attacking a priority target during the Corpus Railjack missions, even more when you're also in a Void Storm, reduced the spawn rate of anti hacking rings when multiple players are inside the point of interest in the Corpus Railjack. The Void Fissure and Void Storm World State window has now been split up to negate having to scroll extensively through the list. So the Void Fissure World State window will remain on the normal star chart and the Void Storm World State window has been moved to the Railjack star chart. As for the Railjack fixes, DE fixed a functionality loss if in Sevagoth's pre-death shadow form while on an enemy cruise ship that explodes 
explodes, Fix being unable to activate the Particle Ram, Tether, and Shatter Burst battle mods while using a controller, they fix clients becoming stuck on the Railjack loading screen during join in progress if the host enters the Corpus Capital ship at the perfect time, they fix being unable to complete the install Cephalon Sire stage of the Rising Tide quest if you had played a Railjack mission hosted by someone who already owns a Railjack, they fix custom HUD elements of Warframes not being visible on loading into a new Railjack mission if they were using a Railjack seat during the loading tunnel, sentient anomaly missions overriding a chosen void storm mission in the Val Proxima if they are sharing the same node, context actions missing for clients to enter the Railjack from the dry dock after returning from a successful Railjack mission, right, they fix using recall warp right when the Corpus airlock teleport timer hits zero, causing multiple issues including players getting stuck in the airlock area. With a note that recall warp will now be disabled once size transmission countdown begins, similar to what we do with the commander missions to avoid future issues. They fixed Mirage's Hall of Mirror clones behaving oddly when cast before exiting the Railjack and then re-entering, a bug that could break a number of Railjack encounters if you entered a loading tunnel as the operator. Cases of missing Railjack load tunnel effects, the HUD missing if you launched your Railjack from your orbiter as your operator, and lastly they fixed a script error that could occur if a Terra Embatter Moa was killed and it was winding up for a mortar attack. As for the optimizations, DE made ongoing micro-optimizations to improve overall game performance and some micro-optimizations to core gameplay scripts. As for the game's overall fixes with 30.0.8, DE fixed a progression stopper in the War Within quest if you have a Nautilus equipped during the Purge Precept phase, with the note that they've also adjusted the overall Sentinel firing frequency during that phase to avoid excessive deaths. They fixed UI notification for Mastery Rank 30 Blessings not being broadcasted to all players in the relay, multiple bugs with the Blessing Altar, that being the altar getting into wacky poses, the altar disappearing when the blesser left, and the blessing effect stacking if multiple players bless the relay in a short time frame. They've also fixed some masks sold by Nakak in Cetus, appearing as the default operator hood icon rather than their original icons, a server-side error that would prevent viewing certain clans in the profile view, a bug that would leave the navigation squad voting UI in a bad state after certain types of match-made errors, Captain Vor's seer pistol firing bullet from his Kronos sword hand, the Plains of Eidolon eliminate nearby enemies bonus objective never having a chance to fail, using Sevagoth's shadow consumability on squad mates with friendly fire on in the simulacrum causing their Warframe and Operator go invisible and possible loss of functionality. They fixed navigation getting into a bad state, the first mission selected after an error, Warframe turning into a laffy, taffy, wacky inflatable tube man after boarding K-Drive in the cold below capture scene, Wisp not raising her arm when firing the epitaph, the Perler skin showing as a dual pistol skin for single pistols even after you purchase the bundle, with a note that the single and dual versions of the skin are now distinctly labelled, and they've also made it more clear from the bundle page that you get both a single and dual version of the skin. They fix the clan and alliance emblems and sigils when viewing someone else's profile, the clan sigil not displaying on your operator, some relics showing Operation Orphix Venom as their drop source, the protective tentacles not appearing over top the hives in the Cambian Drift, a harmless script error that could occur for clients with a poor network connection joining a mission with a void rig in guard mode, and a script error occurring when blessing in a relay. Now that was 30.0.8, but we also have 30.0.8.1 which made two fixes, that was DE fixed an inability to complete the Heart of Deimos quest due to no enemies spawning, and script errors that could occur in the Cambian Drift hive encounters. So that was the patch note readings, apologies for the delayed release of this, going through the other ones I've missed right after this. Because watching 